Where would we be without the innovators? Those who dream of a better way and then find it. It is in their honor and to nurture their successors that the family of University of Florida professor and Gatorade inventor, Dr. Robert Cade, has proposed to build the Cade Museum for Innovation in downtown Gainesville, a museum dedicated to creativity as expressed through science. What do old cars, football players, and violins have in common? University of Florida Professor of Medicine and Physiology, Dr. James Robert Cade, the inventor of Gatorade and a prolific scientific researcher in his lifetime as well, but also a Renaissance man, equal parts athletics and the arts, science, industry, and philanthropy. It is that balance which Cade's family is stressing in plans for the Cade Museum for Innovation and Invention. We are a science-based museum where it's built around inventions and the science behind inventions, but I would like to emphasize that we're also unique in that we add human creativity into the mix. So we're science plus human creativity equals new invention. People ask, what do violins have to do with that? Well, to me, I see the approach of whole-brained thinking. And your very best inventors that have come through with breakthrough inventions, if you look through history, have often been artists and musicians as well. And to develop that right hemisphere of the brain with music, with art, and so forth is very important to the creative process for scientists as well. A point not lost on Dr. Cade, who learned an appreciation for music and words early on, if not an appreciation for the structured approach of his early education in his native Texas. Still, he did find encouragement in some early mentors. The two very most important people in my father's life from his childhood were his Lutheran pastor in the church he grew up and his violin teacher, who both saw something in Bobby that his school teachers did not. My father was among the very worst students ever, um, and in that he shares distinction with Einstein and Edison were also problem students. Everyone knows Bill Gates was a problem student as well. My father did not even graduate from high school. Um, he did not finish his English paper. His English teacher wrote a, a letter to his mother in 1941 complaining that there was no favorable change in his attitude and it was a disservice to the children that did want to learn and so forth. So he, he actually enlisted in the Navy, did not graduate from high school, but while he was in the Navy, spent the entire time memorizing poetry. So during that time, he developed a love for literature, for languages, um, applied, took the entrance exam at the University of Texas and went straight to college from the Navy without completing his high school degree. Cade may not have had a high school diploma, but he did have a well-rounded education and a boundless curiosity, which could see the artful in science and the scientific in the arts, an ability perhaps manifested most unmistakably in his fascination for the Studebaker automobile. I'm standing in front of my father's very first Studebaker that he bought in the 50s. It's called Old Spot, and he lovingly restored it over the years and fell in love with the whole concept of the Studebaker car company and spent the next 40 years acquiring one by one Studebakers from spanning 1860 to 1960. Studebaker began by manufacturing wheelbarrows during the gold rush and in part it was the company's ability to adapt and its knack for innovation which drew Cade to the cars. This is a Studebaker farm wagon. It was one of their most famous vehicles ever made. It was um, used throughout the United States to, to transport produce. My father believed that the Studebaker company was the most innovative of all the car companies in the United States. And it is really the only company that successfully transitioned from horse-drawn carriages to gasoline automobiles. And they always employed the very best industrial designers and artistic designers in their company. And they believed that the car should be absolutely beautiful, a work of art as well. So I think he really saw it as a combination of um, advanced technology, new inventions, but also of a beautiful art piece. And my father was very much what I call a whole-brained thinker or a renaissance man, where they appreciated the beauty of science and the beauty of art both together. And I think the Studebaker for him really incorporated everything that he loved about both aspects. So it is only natural that when Cade passed away, the family sought to preserve his prized Studebaker collection, but also something more, Cade's spirit and vision. Originally when we first uh, incorporated as a foundation and established as a 501c3, it was with the idea of what do we do with these cars? How do we keep these cars together in a collection? 
And the more we researched it, the more we saw that we could expand the vision into one much broader than cars, but that encompasses innovation in American history. And the Studebakers give a very nice entree into that storytelling ability because it spans over 100 years of American history. Innovation, of course, has played a prominent role in shaping our nation from the innovation of the United States Constitution to the Inventors Clause in the Constitution, instrumental in encouraging American innovations even today. This was George Washington's idea. He insisted on including it in the Constitution because he knew he was going to sign a bill into law creating the U.S. Patent Office. He, as well as the other founding fathers, believed that the key to our the, the key to the engine of our economic growth as a new nation was to protect inventors and to give them an incentive to create new products. Which is what happened in 1965 when Cade and his research team, Dr. Shires, Dr. De Casada, and Dr. Free, invented a thirst-quenching, nutrient-restoring concoction, which has since become a fixture on sporting event sidelines and was credited by opposing coaches with giving the University of Florida Gators a competitive edge over opponents. Gatorade. The cars will provide a physical representation of their era, a looking glass into the evolution of our culture, our nation, and our world. Plans for the Cade Museum for Innovation, soon to be located on Depot Avenue in downtown Gainesville, have also done some changing. It has evolved over the years, and it's quite different from where we started, but I think it encompasses now more of his overall personality as a Renaissance man with his love of um, of science, his love of invention, his love of music, his love of the creative process, but above all, his love of humankind. He was a real lover of humanity and spent his whole life trying to improve humanity. That is, in the final analysis, what inventors do. And Cade's work didn't begin or end with Gatorade, not by a long shot. Some ideas came and went, and some may be making a comeback. He did have um, the, the hydraulic football helmet that um, was created in 68 to prevent concussions. And that has come full circle now. They're talking about how do we redesign. And the new designs are actually almost imitations of what he came up with, with the same concept. He was also in the 60s even irradiating pecans as an idea to keep longer shelf life. He finished his career studying autism and the effects of diet on mental illness. And that was what he finished his career with. And we would like to highlight some of that as well. And moreover, the Cade Museum hopes to highlight Alachua County and Gainesville's contributions to the world of science and innovation. Everybody knows that Gainesville is a, a sports powerhouse, the University of Florida, but um, not as many know that we're also a powerhouse for invention. And through my research with the museum, I discovered that we rank just behind MIT and Caltech in terms of technology transfer. That's patents that make it to the marketplace. And we are the number one public university in terms of idea generator and patent um, applications. So it's really time to get that knowledge out into the broad community, and that's what the Cade Museum would like to do. One entire gallery would be devoted to local inventions, highlighting specifically ones coming out of the UF, but also from local inventors, with interactive displays explaining the process of invention, who the inventor was, what problem it solved. And we hope that that would serve as a platform for venture capitalists coming to town that would be familiar with what is coming out of our community, but also to inspire visitors that they too could have an inventive idea. Inspiring them as Dr. Robert Cade was once inspired by a pastor, a violin teacher, and by the many athletes with whom he worked over the years, and perhaps encouraging them as his wife Mary did throughout their marriage. My mother gave him the gift of time. She was a homemaker and she really deserves full credit with the, the overall picture of their life together. I like to think of my mother as the, she was a person holding the kite string and my dad was the kite who was flying above, doing all these incredible things that people saw, but she was the one that anchored him and held him firmly planted on the ground. One day, maybe the Cade Museum can provide encouragement for a new generation of innovators. For more information on the Cade Museum for Innovation and Invention, visit www.cademuseum.org or call 352-395-5053. For County Update, I'm Alan Yetter.